So hello and welcome to this latest edition of the Virtual Bridge Sessions. In fact, I forget which number this is. What 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 is it, Jason? What are we at now? You you usually keep with a running total. Is it like it's like a hundred and hundred and hundred and seventy two three something like that? <laughs> There you go, I'm sure it's a lucky number. <laughs> so today we're joined um, by Charlie Johnston, recently now Head of Computing and Technologies at New College Lancaster. Congratulations, Charlie. And also MSLE, that's a difficult acronym for me to say <laughs> this time in the morning, MSLE Ambassador for Microsoft. Um, you're racking up those titles. And, and today you're going to share your plans and what you're doing with the whole Microsoft ecostructure yeah. at New College Lancaster for today and beyond. So... As always, Charlie, tell us more. Okay, um, thanks for the introduction. Um, you've done a great job there in actually killing a couple of my slides. <laughs> but hey, that's what happens. Um, okay, so it's really about our vision about where we should be going uh, within computing. Really, the pandemic has entirely changed the landscape that we're working in. Um, since students had to go online, uh, staff had to go online, none of us had access to their institutions, and we all started using things like Zoom and uh, Teams. Teams has become massive for us, as I'm sure it has for all of you. So much so that that landscape has changed uh, the providers as well. Recent uh, Q3 2021 figures from Microsoft is that their IaaS and PaaS revenue is up 48% on the previous year. That's massive. And in that space, AWS is 52% of the market. Microsoft is 31. Alibaba has nine. Google only has eight. It was actually one of my plans to um, get on board with Google Cloud Services as well. But until they become more relevant, I think they'll be focusing on Microsoft primarily and AWS secondly. Uh, so, moving on, we've got a timeline of what we've actually done with Microsoft. So, where this all started was a skilling day that Microsoft held back in uh, June 2020, uh, hosted by Andrew Bettany. And he had been launching uh, Tuesday meetings at that point, and we started to get involved in these Tuesday meetings. And we decided that we were going to adopt Azure Lab Services because we knew we were in trouble as far as getting students into college is concerned. Um, we had some idea we might get students back for the start of this year, but there was no certainty at that point. So we took on lab services so that the infrastructure, the server work that we could do, we could do remotely. Students could do from their homes, from their phones, from any device. So we took that on and continued our conversation with Andrew Clare and the uh, UK education team. And uh, in December 2020, at their invitation, we joined the Microsoft Learn for Educators institutional program. And we were actually the first Scottish institution to join that, whether it be college, university or whatever. I think we just beat West or Clyde, it was one of the two. Um, so we went through that at a rate of knots and then got onboarded with them so that my team could also get involved with this. And this is something I would really recommend for anyone in a college or university. Get into this program, the benefits to your students are immense. So we worked away for a wee while and then Microsoft decided to offer us a case study. So they produced a case study in which four of my students, principal and myself took part, which is sitting on Microsoft's website at the moment. Um, I wish I could be a little more enthusiastic about it because the production company that made it 
I think my film and TV students may have done a better job at the time. So round about that time, when the case study was uh, published, I was invited to join the Microsoft Learn for Educator Ambassadors Pilot Programme. And it was great having a pilot programme because I was able to tell people, look, I'm one of only five on the planet. One of the first five, it sounds really good, doesn't it? Makes you seem important. Hey, it is what it is. So, we also became the first college in the UK, only the fourth educational institution, to sign a shared goals agreement with Microsoft. Now, in reality, it doesn't mean all that much, but it is just an acknowledgement that we will work together, we'll continue to share those goals, and they're the same ones that I'm pretty sure every college would I agree that we share. So since we started off over the last year, I think for all colleges, industry relationships are becoming really vitally important. Um, says there, they're the keys to the future success. And in a way they are, because the more that you can get good into industry contacts, the more you can do for your student student body. Now, our industry contacts at the moment, um, we work with AWS, Cisco, Microsoft, Oracle and CompTIA. We also have some uh, non-vendors that we work with, but I'm not going to mention names at this point because I want to keep them. Um, but we have organisations that because of what we are doing, want us to act as a talent stream for them. So they want to be able to take our students into their organisations, at the very least for internships after they finish, and probably also for work. Because one of the things that we're doing, that we'll talk about later on, there's not many people doing it. I, there are no degrees in it in the UK, but there is one in Dublin. So, we started, as I say, way back a year ago when we got signed up. We started delivering AZ900, so Azure Fundamentals and Azure AI Fundamentals, AI900, to primarily our HN students. Though one of my colleagues who taught in Level 6 identified some very good students who she brought onto the programme as well. Um, more about them later. And last summer, we actually ran a summer programme uh, for people who hadn't been able to take part. And we included the data course, uh, fundament data fundamentals, DP900, and Security Identity and Compliance course, SC900, um, offered to all our students during the summer. I, and that went pretty well, apart from the fact that I kept getting calls to uh, help with uh, invigilation. Just as well we couldn't go anywhere last summer. I wouldn't have wanted to be invigilating from a bar or a beach. Our future plans, really, um, they include HN Computing Next Gen, um, the two pilot centres for 21-22. Sorry, I should have edited that slide. For 22-23, are ourselves in NESCOL. And what we're believing from everything that we've been involved with in uh, next gen is that it will increase our flexibility. It will increase our ability to tailor courses. So it is our plans to actually make sure that we properly integrate the vendor certification and not just Microsoft's, but others as well, um, because we want to be able to offer the very best that we can for our students. And the reason that we need to do that is because for a long time, industry has told us 
broadly, not specifically New College Lanarkshire, but broadly that we're not fit for purpose. So my mission is really to um, make sure that our students are fit for purpose. There is a huge skills shortage in a specific area, which I think we as colleges are well placed, probably being more agile than uh, a lot of institutions to be able to turn it around and uh, head towards this goal. So my aim is to create cloud native graduates in, from all our courses. To have these guys able to create cloud native apps, or if you're in the ops side of DevOps, be able to commission them and have them running. Um, and where we are seeing real traction with industry is DevOps. DevOps being one of these kind of ethereal areas where um, there isn't really such a thing as a DevOps engineer because it's really a kind of way teams work together using a relatively non-specific set of tools because there are so many that you can choose from. And that's massively in demand. One of my former students who is uh, three years out of college has just been offered a job with CloudShare at 65K plus very considerable benefits. Now, I might have just become head of computing at New College Lanarkshire, but he's just raced past me after three years. Um, and all the best to him. And that's because he's a DevOps engineer. And the, the skills are not out there. We need to get them out there. So that's why we'll be embedding these in-demand qualifications, not just from Microsoft, but from others as well. And I think specifically there, I'm really talking about AWS. Now, traditionally, schools have geared towards um, pupils going to university. And we've kind of been in the in-between kind of area. Um, but what, and even at our level, what we've been doing is skilling uni uh, students for university. And yes, some of them get jobs, but often it's for university. I want to turn that around because I don't believe that we are here just as a feeder for universities. I want us to produce students, get a reputation for having students who can go into employment after an HNC or after an HND and be very quickly up and running. And to do that, we need to give them the correct skills and abilities. So that takes us on to where we are right now. Um, we have moved on. We're still doing fundamentals, obviously, but I've just been part of a, a pilot program again to teach AZ-104. Um, now, AZ-104 is actually the Azure Administrator qualification. So it's a level up for anybody that was doing it within a college, staff-wise. It gives you access to the Microsoft Certified Trainer Program. So it is much higher level. But actually, for your students, depending on what they're studying, it can actually be a lot easier to identify with. I, because if I look at what our second years are doing at the moment, um, it's very close. We do that very outmoded HND technical support. We do it because it fits well with the degree program that we, uh, we teach for UWS. Now, a lot of the focus on our HND program is Active Directory Domain Services, Users and Groups, Group Policy, Networking. Azure Administrator, AZ-104, starts with Azure AD, 
So that's a straightforward um, comparison. Moves on to identities, which is how to work with users and groups within Azure. Azure policy is equivalent to group policy. VNets and all the rest of the networking stuff is similar to what we do in our networking programs. So the students instantly have a recognition and okay, there's a lot to learn, but they have a recognition of what they're actually doing and why they're doing it. But we're going to broaden that out next year. And this is actually something that I would recommend um, as a goal, is we're going to go on to, again, the uh, associate programs for artificial intelligence and for data. Um, even how we deliver our fundamentals programs is changing a little bit in that we, um, we've decided through experience that AI is the hook. AI is the course that everybody loves. So we are now doing AI first. After we do AI, well, what does AI depend on? AI depends on data. So we're doing data second. And actually the hardest of the three of these is the AZ, the Azure Fundamentals, because it's quite ethereal. So we are going to be delivering in that order uh, to our probably HNC and level six students next semester or next year. But the benefits, and Microsoft have actually got a pilot program for the role-based certifications um, through the MSLE team in the UK. I would recommend you taking a look at it if you were interested. They've got a pilot program just about to start, which uh, you need to onboard with them and get started with if you want to actually get on to it. And the reason I've mentioned Scalable here is if you've done any of the Microsoft fundamentals before, you would know that the labs that you do are either live on Azure using an Azure Pass or they're sandboxed. The role-based certifications, the associate level uses Scalable and Scalable's labs are very, very good. Um, my students are loving using the Scalable Labs because what you do is they just give you a virtual machine, instructions down the right-hand side, and you log into a virtual machine which connects straight into Azure. So you have your own uh, tenant that you're working with. And you don't have any worries about shutting things down at the end of it because you're not being charged for it. You're not using any Azure time yourself. So you're not using, there's no cost involved in doing the labs two, three, four, five times if you want to make sure you get it in. And this is what we are using to create a talent stream. I have ambitions to go further, but there may be a wee bit of a push and it may take a little while to get there because I would really like to see our students leave with AZ400, which is um, Azure DevOps. Because I know from the people that I've been speaking to in industry, they would walk into work. Why have we done that? We've done it because industry jobs, industries are looking for these certifications. There's many of them that have AZ104 now as a prerequisite as a requirement before you even go in there, or the equivalent AWS qualification. And I mentioned earlier, our raison d'etre is not sending uh, students to universities, it's getting students into careers. Now, if that means they go to university and end their career, it's still a success. But for me, the big success will be if we can have students leave college straight into well-paid jobs. It obviously raises the college's profile, otherwise it wouldn't be here. 
But I want to go broader. I take this Microsoft ambassador thing uh, quite seriously. I want to make IT education in Scotland relevant to industry, not just New College Lanarkshire. I want to see this adopted much, much wider. What's the impact of getting involved in this? Well, engaged students. I held a mini conference back in March. I had three industry speakers plus an AI expert from Microsoft, and our students were buzzing at the end of it. We're going to make create employability skills with them. They are going to be our talent stream. And it helps motivate staff. As I'm sure you all know, CPD is a massive problem. And the MSLE program, free, it helps. Now, just another couple of things. I've hit the 20 minutes. But just a couple of things to add to finish off with. Um, Microsoft have just launched a free Microsoft Certified Educator program, I, which runs up to the end of the year. It's a short time scale, but it gives you the learning materials, which let's face it, um, I was speaking to Claire Riley this morning. She reckons that most experienced educators would just sit and pass. But it also gives you a practice test and a certification exam. Um, as I say, the program's open till just about Christmas, but the exams can be sat by mid-January, and I would highly recommend it. Um, I might even try and do it myself over the holidays. Uh, so, anybody get any questions? Charlie, I, I have more than a few, <laughs> and there's definitely one. I figured you might. <laughs> there's definitely one inside the, uh, <laughs> um, in the chat as well that I'll bring in, but just uh, because I'm in first. Um, I, I think that whole thing about that your ambitions for a new college Lanarkshire and the wider sector are incredible. And I think the fact that you're positioned as an ambassador um, for MSLE gives gives you that sort of responsibility for all of us as well to take us with yeah, you on yeah, this journey which is agree. excellent um so the, the notion i'm going to start with vendor qualifications because i want to ask a question about that because the idea of embedding vendor for qualifications into college courses has been a bugbear for a long long time yes and one of the issues in fact we were talking about it at a recent computing meeting with sqa and uh, a number of colleges and one of the issues was that vendor qualifications, there are two issues. Vendor qualifications change are updated on a regular basis. And, and sometimes matching that with the, the SQA can be a challenge. But yeah. another yeah. fundamental point is vendor, qual vendor qualifications are can be quite challenging. Oh, in, yes. In terms of getting your student through them. And I, I, agree. I know there's hesitancy in the sector mm -hmm. about making that a requirement. Um, and mapping them to the SQA qualification, because at the end of the day, not everyone gets through. Yes. So uh, those dual challenges, what, what's, what's your answer to that? Okay, um, that's quite a straightforward one, actually. Um, you might not think so, but for example, what we are doing this year, uh, we are changing how we teach four, un four credits worth so that we're actually giving the students DevOps. And we're using Microsoft materials for the DevOps path. Um, we're just about to move on to pipelines, and we'll either use Azure pipelines or we'll use GitHub Actions. So we're actually embedding, but the qualifications themselves, the students won't be at the stage of being able to sit AZ 400 by the time they finish HNC. But they'll have had enough practical experience on Azure that they'll be able to do AZ-900 AZ and maybe some of them 104 without separate classes. So proper embedding. So that brings the question, do you embed the certification or the learning? 
So at the moment we are embedding the learning, we are having separate classes for certification. So if certification is not fully embedded at this point. As to SQA, um, I don't think I actually know any of you in the call, except Kenji, apologies for that. But I've been fighting SQA for years about how, um, how up-to-date computing is. I, the last computing framework was launched in 2012, which means that the development of it probably started in 2010. So we are still working with that framework. And yeah, there have been tweaks, there have been changes. But as to the fact that, and I know how Microsoft does this, their qualifications are updated quarterly. And yes, that wouldn't change, that wouldn't fit the way SQA work, but maybe it's the way SQA works that needs to change. Yes, I mean, <laughs> it's like you're throwing down the gauntlet. And oh, I, know, uh, I, I know a lot of colleges embed qualifications and learning as much as they can but it is a challenge it's absolutely a challenge oh yeah now, now jamie jamie had a question in chat um i know you had to step out for a second for um a call but jamie do you want to ask the question um yeah it's just obviously the proprietary nature uh, of any um off-premise cloud-based solution is something that we can't avoid um, and i just wondered if you had any issues obviously any concerns that focusing is kind of putting eggs in one basket by focusing on one technology or encouraging uh, staff students to focus on a, a particular technology and that maybe detracts away from more broader um, education and training and IT concepts. I absolutely agree with you, but um, I would, mm, I hesitate to answer this the way that I would want to. <laughs> uh, yes, we teach IT concepts and all the rest of it, but what we need to be aware of is that the world is not moving to the cloud, it's already moved to the cloud. Yeah. And Scottish Government has spent a lot of money in recent years on cyber security, massively important topic. On data science, a massively important topic as well. I remember back in 2017, my boss at the time, sent me to, uh, I can't even remember what the name of the group was, but it was a high level group sitting in uh, Dundee and Angus College with universities, um, the data lab and others present. And they were talking about the skills for the future and there was not one single mention of cloud. Hmm. So, this has been out there and it's largely been ignored. We're still teaching students software development for writing a program in C Sharp or Java or whatever for a desktop machine. That's not what industry is doing. Industry is developing for the web. So why are we not keeping pace? So yes, what I've talked about very much is about the proprietary stuff now. One of the differences between AWS and Azure, we actually, we're an AWS Academy, but we haven't started teaching it because Amazon are very strict in that if you're going to teach one of their courses, you teach the whole course. You don't take bits and pieces of it. It's mm -hmm. all or nothing. Microsoft are very generous in that respect. Materials are there. Use them whatever way you like to use them. And that's actually what we've done. The terms of, in terms of generic concepts, yeah, they still have to be there. But I'm beginning to wonder how relevant is it that we teach processor architecture when actually things have moved away from the desktop machine and the locally based server. So some of these generic concepts, I think have got a timeline. Okay, and unfortunately, we have a timeline to hear. 
our conversation. <laughs> and that takes us up to our 30 minutes. And I, I, I desperately want to ask you questions um, around, well, things like next generation, SQA, HND data science in one year. <laughs> Uh, more oh. about vendor qualifications. There's a whole thing, but we will continue the conversation here. <laughs> but for you joining us uh, for the recording, apologies, that's all we have time for. Um, thanks so much for everyone here. Hopefully you'll have time to join us at a future virtual bridge session. We do have a few before the, the winter festivities start. Um, but until then, as always, everyone, stay safe.